but fundamentally, the kinds of ideas we can think about has to do with the diet of things that we take in, the informational diet. And it's so much broader now. For example, I come across 13 year old kids all the time that say something amazing. And I say, wow, how, how did you know that? And they say, oh, I saw a TED talk on this and blah, blah, blah. When we grew up, we had our homeroom with whatever teacher we had in our homeroom. Now every kid has access to the best thinkers in the world, giving the best talk of their lives. That's just standard stuff that you can access that. So I think on balance, this is incredibly good. Now, in answer to your question about what can we do for our brains, the answer to that's pretty simple. Seek novelty. Always challenge yourself cognitively. This is the single most important thing that's emerged from neuroscience about what we can do. Because what happens is, you know, I mentioned the internal model before. What happens is we sort of get on our path of least resistance. We say, okay, look, I know how to operate in this job, in this world. You know, I know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to keep doing this um, because my brain has optimized itself for this. Right. But the fact is, you're no longer challenging it. It's not building new roadways now. I, I, and I, 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 I have to just put something to this, not to interrupt your stream of thought, but go ahead. I just want to know, can we parse out, because I so want us to understand this, seek novelty versus challenge cognitively. I think this is what I'm trying to clumsily get at. Is there a certain amount of what feels like novelty, like can I read the latest story, what's the blah, 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 versus challenging ourselves cognitively. You, you framed it so well, I'm just asking you to help Yeah, me. okay, sorry, I, I should, you're right, I should drill down on what I mean by seeking novelty. What I mean is seeking things that you have not done before that are challenging for your brain. And by challenging, I mean frustrating but achievable. So just as an example, you know, like taking on anything, okay, I'm going to learn, you know, I'm going to learn how to speak Russian. I'm going to learn how to do whatever, take on some new task uh, that I've not done before. Any version of that wow. is good wow, for the brain wow. because you're, yeah, that's what I mean by novelty. Thanks for asking. It's, it's this thing about pushing yourself to make new connections and establish things. And, you know, there are, there are really good studies on this, some of which have lasted decades about, um, what happens when people retire? Most people, when they retire, their lives shrink a lot and they end up sitting on the couch watching television. But some people don't ever really retire. Just as one example, there are these nuns uh, who live in convents their whole lives till the day they die. And there's been an ongoing study for about 20 years on these nuns, uh, all of whom agreed to donate their brains upon their death. And at autopsy, it was discovered that several of these women had Alzheimer's disease, but nobody knew it when they were alive. They didn't have any of the cognitive deficits. Wow. And yes, you're right about that. Yeah the, yeah, the reason they didn't have these cognitive deficits is because till the day they died, they were doing things. They had, they had chores and responsibilities. They were dealing with other people, which is, by the way, one of the you know, most useful things your brain can do because other, you, know, you never know what they're going to say or how they're going to react or whatever. So they were active cognitively till the day they died. And so even as their brain was physically degenerating with Alzheimer's, they were building new roadways and bridges all the time. So that this is, is the most- That is astounding piece in the book, yes. Yeah, no, so anyway, th and there's a million ways to do this. Um, I mean, just as one stupid example, you know, I often will brush my teeth with my other hand. I'll always try to drive a different route home from work back when we used to drive. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's easy to do. You just take different roads and whatever, and that way you don't become an automatized zombie where, you know, your your commute time shrinks to zero because you're just, you know, doing it on autopilot. Um, so I think anyway, this those is things are so relevant. I mean, there's, you know, what's happening with our kids and people are interested, but all this, how can we really learn from these findings and begin to absorb them because everybody wants to get the most out of their brain?